So, um, my name is Mike, Mike Corlett. I work for Pro Reps. We represent Champion as well as Byline, who um, did all this equipment and dish machine here. All this works together. Um, it, it starts out there with the trays going on to the uh, tray accumulator. Those are going to come around, um, and then the scrapping is going to happen here. As you pull from here, you're going to uh, put the plates on there, all the dishes go on there, and then all feed into uh, the dishes, feed into the dish machine. And then you have a trough right here as you dump your waste into here. It's going to flow into the pulper, or they call it a slow speed grinder, is what it is. And what this does is it has a water press in it. And you can put food in there, and you can also put paper products in there as well. So it's ideal to have about a 70 to 30% food to paper ratio. So you don't wanna just jam a bunch of paper in there. Um, also, you wanna like a nice steady flow and everything as it goes into there. You don't wanna, um, you know, I like to actually have it turned on first and then get the water flowing through the trough and then just let it go for like a minute or so before you start loading the food in there. But your straws are good, paper plates are fine, like the styrofoam's okay. Um, this is the stuff right here that you don't want to put in. Um, and I've seen these have major problems, particularly with oysters and clamshells. I don't know if you guys are going to be doing that here anyways, but don't put those through the pulper. Um, and nutshells as well. So. You know, obviously wood or rags, not that you would put those in there, but um, the other thing you want to stay away from as well is, it doesn't say it on here, but if there's plastic wrap on anything, you don't want to get any cellophane in there because it gets into the gears and it causes problems with that as well. So other than that, everything's pretty much goes in there. The main thing to keep an eye out for are the nutshells and the, and the raw bones. The small bones like chicken is okay. It's like the big, large cut bones or can cause problems. But the real little ones are okay. Rib bones I'd probably stay away from. Kinda wanna just throw those in the trash. Okay, so um, to turn everything on, you got your dish machine here. You probably wanna get this fired up first because you need some time to um, have the temperature get up to a, a safe washing temperature. And you're looking for 150 minimum on the wash and you want 180 on the final rinse. It's not going to give you a reading until it goes into that final rinse section. There. So have you guys used uh, FT machines before, these conveyors? Yes, we have a conveyor. Okay, so you're familiar with them? The temperatures. The temperatures, okay. What was the brand you were using before? Wow. You're not sure? They're all pretty similar in terms of how they operate and, and as far as the cleaning and the breakdown and everything. It's Barco. Excuse me? Barco. Barco? Yeah. Oh. Hobart. Oh, it's Hobart. Hobart. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I used to actually work for the Hobart rep, so I'm familiar with their dish machines. They're pretty similar to these as well. So I believe it's 185, right? For the final rinse, not 180? Did they? Ch I, 180 is what I've always been told. And so if, can we go back to this here? Yes. How do we turn it on to burn the water? Okay, so you're going to turn this on. This is going to be heating up. And then you're going to turn on, um, get everything going here. Here. You're going to go here. They put a password on this, Chris? No, it should be a password on it. Yeah. 
password. Ask me for a password. So what's this is very helpful for this right here. So and it's got this is what we want to get to. Press start to begin. It's gonna fill, and then once it fills, it's gonna be ready to go. You hit that again, and then all the water, everything turns on, all the water and everything gets um, flowing here. Um, before you. You want to make sure that this is clear of debris. Basically, it's going to push everything into here, and this is the grinder. And then it, what's going to come out of here is it actually comes out kind of dry because it squeezes all the water out. Right. What this is designed to do is to take like 10 trash cans full and turn it into one, basically. So you're not constantly running to the trash. What happens if you accidentally drop a spoiler point? You've got the magnet under here. Yeah, this one right here. This is the grabber. Okay. So there's a magnet right here. Okay. So it, so if you drop silverware in there, it'll 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 magnetize to right here. So that's designed to prevent it from going into there. Okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So, I'm just gonna get this going here. I don't know why it's asking me if it's happening. No, I'm locked out. We can kind of talk about these a little bit. Um, these are removable for cleaning. We've got um, some laser, um, like the detect sensors. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, we've got some over there, and so that's if the tray is sticking out, so it prevents it. You know, from, it'll read it, and then it'll it'll stop the machine. So if it stops for some reason, you should check the sensor. It's probably something one of the students put the. Um, uh, tray on and it was sticking out. Uh -huh. So, um, and then for cleaning this, if you, if you can do a heavy duty cleaning, you don't necessarily need to do it every day because taking these things off every day is going to be uh, really intense. Okay. Cleaning. So, if you kind of just Wipe them down. You can actually use this to hose them off a little bit. This is all removable. Um, and then you've got uh, the, the belt here. You can take like a damp cloth and just run it and kind of hold it on here, and that'll clean. That's kind of the best way to do it. The one that we currently have yeah. creates no damp. We're taking it, okay. like, removing it, and we're washing it completely. Yeah. You can lift this up, the whole thing does not come off. So. Now how do we lubricate? Do we lubricate any of the parts? You don't have to do that. Yeah. We don't want to do that. The conveyor belt only works on the push So there's no lubrication needed for the conveyor belt? No. Okay. It's the one that we're using right now. You, you, you gotta lubricate it? Yeah. yeah. What's, is it similar material as this? Yeah. I would say we're good with that. Because there's no like metal or anything. It's all like hard plastic. So you don't really need to worry about that. Okay. So just the daily cleaning and then probably maybe once a week. Uh, what I've seen people do is they'll do like sections. They'll do, you know, like 20 of them. It's a lot of these. So, and then, you know, as you can see, they are removable, but. Um, 
they stay pretty clean, and you can hose them down. And then all this stuff. So I noticed that you had a pedal over there. Yes. Let's just say we want to run it. Do we have yes. to stand there? Yeah, yeah, on this one, you got to have somebody on the top. So that you can't push a green button and it won't go? No, I don't think I'm going to hold it more. Because they've got it connected to that. Yeah, they have to do all these different, some of them have to pedal, some of them don't. Whoever specified this decided that they wanted to have a pedal. So that's why they put it over there to load in. Because if you're scrapping, you don't really, you're just scrapping, right? But over there, you get backed up a little bit. So I think that's why they put it there. And then there's the flow, water's going to flow all the way back there. This is for your silver. The main thing you 
you want to clean on these is all right here. Okay? And you definitely want to do this daily because if you don't, it gets a nasty smell. You get nasty. So after you turn it off, um, we'll let it run for a little bit. So you can see like nothing's coming in there right now, but what's happening is this is going to grind, go through here, and then there's the recycled water going down the drain over here somewhere in the back. In the back there, this is called gray water. So as it presses out all that stuff, drop that water out and then what's we going to get out of here is the pulp. So I'm going to turn it off. You guys kind of got the gist of it. So we're never allowed to clean the inside of it. What's that? Yeah, maintenance on the inside. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you. Let me turn it off. So that's the, just the red button here. It's a stop. Okay. And then look in here, you want to get, um, you can get that real hose over here, I think it'll go that far, you want to rinse it out, and there's a screen in there, and you just kind of want to get like a brush, and like a nylon brush, and just kind of knock off the big bits in there, and then so just the hose it out. No, the screen's not removable, it's locked in there. So. And then you want to clean this out. Kind of hose it out. There's your auger right there. So the auger is inside the screen. You want augers up. So as it grinds, it augers up and it spits out. It squeeze out all the water, sends the water down there, augers up, and then spits out down here. And then you want to rinse this out a little bit. Kind of hose that out. Um, I've, seen, I've seen some people run like soapy water through here, which is not a bad idea um, because something that's kind of a mild soap, it's like kind of low suds, just to run and then run some fresh clean water through as well. Um, I used to have one of these in my test kitchen and if you forget to clean it, it's really disgusting. So I would do that. I would get like a bucket of soapy water, just dump it in, just run it through. And then um, just run some fresh water through, and then that way. So actually, you know, do like the regular cleaning, clean it out, turn it back on, and then run the soapy water through, and then rinse it out, and that'll kind of keep it clean. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? You've got conveyor speeds over there as well for the uh, belt, as well as the tray accumulator. So you can crank it up, turn it down. And then I would say maybe post these somewhere. Um, just to kind of give you a reminder. Um, you know, they're laminated so you can put them on the wall or something. Um, and then on the dish machine. So again, you turn it on, it's gonna fill. You wanna make sure the drains are closed. Um, you want to make sure everything's in place. You've got your baskets, your wash arms here, curtains. Um, and then you just turn it on, let it heat, and then you're going to run it. And then are you guys familiar with the breakdown, the cleaning? Uh, Have you done that at all? Yes. Okay. But this is a little different. Okay. So yeah, you're going to want to take out the curtains and give them a rinse. It's important to do because they get all crusty and nasty if you don't. And then um, you've, got, you've got a scrap tray right here that comes out. It's kind of awkward. This one slides out like this. This one you want to kind of clean periodically while you're in. Because this is where you're going to get the most debris in. This is the, the initial rinse tank. So you've got this and then you've got the basket here. So every hour, a couple hours or so, you want to take those 
out to lean on. Resist the temptation to bang it over the top of a trash can, which people intuitively want to do. Um, so it's probably a good idea at the end of the day to, uh, when you're going to do the full breakdown, turn it off and just open everything up so that you don't have hot stainless steel you're dealing with. So let it cool down a little bit. That's what we do now. That's what you do now? Okay, good. And then as you can see right here, it tells you where the curtains go. Medium, medium, and you've got a short there. So that's very helpful because once you take all these things out, you're like, okay, where do they go back? So um, I usually recommend just take them out in, the, in, a, in a specific order and lay them on top of each other and then just put them back in the inverse order. So. And then these wash arms are removable as well. So you can see there's a little clip right there. So those will come out. And then just go right over the top there. The little, just like the Hobart ones, those come out as well. I believe those have end caps as well. So these end caps, or if you need to um, clear some debris out, it's not something that you need to do on a daily basis, but if you need to, you can take these off and run water through there, rinse them out. I always recommend getting extra end caps because if you lose these, you're kind of screwed because the water's just gonna shoot straight out. So um, either that or just put them back on right away. Here, you wanna try? Throwing it back on there, kind of used to it. And then see that clip? Just push it up. There you go, and you're locked in. Same with the bottom? Yep, same with the bottom. Bottom pops up. Bottom's actually a little easier. It just has this bar right there. Pop it up. So you just pop up the. the you have to grab that. Yep, there you go. And then you've got your screens here. You want to rinse those out. Screens there, and then you've got your uh, rinse arm right here, and the screen there. You don't really need to take this out because the nozzles are so small. You should be fine on that one. Um, and then, uh, do you guys de use the de deline? De -line? Yeah. So deline is once a week. Yeah, once a week. Um, check with whoever you guys use Eco Lab for. Um, how much to put in each tank, oh, okay. but I would probably go like two, two to four cups per tank, somewhere around there, but check with them what they recommend for this machine. And yeah, definitely once a week. I mean, we have such terrible water in Southern California, you can see the scale already. Right? <laughs>
Um, any questions? Uh, service time or repair? Service time. Um, it varies. Where do you, you know, go? Um, we do not do the service, but you can you would call Champion for that. The best thing to do it's either it's in the manual, and I believe it's on the data plate. Um, it has an 800 number that you can call. You want to make sure you have model and serial number. Uh, model and serial number will be in the OM. Model and serial number in the, in the OM. So have them on the OM too. Yeah. Okay. So that's right here. Model and serial. Um, there's an 800 number in the manual as well. I don't see it on here. Um, but I'll leave you guys my card. So, ah, there it is, perfect. Okay. This troubleshooting sometimes if there's issues. Um, I always like to call the factory first because sometimes they can just say, well, try this and push this button and do that and then they'll fix it sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> so is that also with the Pulper? Is the Pulper's manual in there? The Pulper is the same company as Champion. Okay. So all this, this is, the Pulper is Champion, the Dish Machine is Champion, and Byline is the same company as Champion as well. They're sister companies. So maybe there's an 800 number. Uh, no, no 800 number on there. Sure. Yeah. Are there any known, um, you know, kind of like the safety precautions on this side, or is there anything that we need to, we need to train our staff with on this side? On the machine side. Um, in terms of safety? Any, any outstanding safety precautions that we need to you know, make our students aware of? Um, the good news is the new machines, all this stuff has safety interlocks. Okay. So if you open up the door, it's going to stop running. Um, you know, it's not like the old ones where they just keep going no matter what. So as soon as you pop the door, even slightly, it'll stop running. So you, the main thing I would say is just don't, if, if you're in a hurry to clean, you want to make sure you let it cool down a little bit because you're at 180 degrees in this tank especially, I mean you see we're at 197, I got some good heat on this thing. Yeah. Um, if you grab that stainless steel immediately, it's going to be really hot. So turn it off, drain it, open the doors, let it cool down a little bit before you get your hands in there on that stainless steel. And just be careful too when you're... Um, Pulling out these wash arms or in these baskets, just because they're sharp edges here, they did a pretty good job of kind of knocking off these corners here. But you can get a little bit cut sometimes here and there. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but especially with soggy hands. Yeah, wet hands. Um, just be careful of stainless steel in here. This stay burned pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. They actually did a pretty good job of it. I just want to be cognizant of it. Um, that's probably the main thing in terms of safety. Will we get extra curtains? Will we get extra cap? Like what extra parts will we get when we get them? You won't get any extra parts. You'll have to order extra parts. Yeah. These are pretty durable. Uh, you're not going to need them like every three months. I, the only thing I would worry about is the end caps, but as long as, you know, I mean, you don't really need to access these on a daily basis, but if you do and you lose the end cap, then it's a pretty cheap part, so maybe I would recommend possibly getting some extra end caps for the wash arm. Plus your service agents. When you get the O&M, the first page you're going to see is your service agent. So if anything goes wrong, call them. It's going to be written right on there. The manufacturer, everything. Social, social serial number, everything will be all written on that first page. Yeah. Trimark does a really good job of just providing all the service agents, serial numbers, and everything. So they'll have all that information there. We could also have the owner manuals and warranty. Actually, I think your guys' warranty has not begun yet. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is good. Usually they end. Let me give you guys my card. <laughs> well, usually right at 
usually within a week or two before you start is when it starts. And it'll tell you how long the warranty is good for. So I know you guys aren't going to open for a while, so if, you know, when you do open and you want me to come back out and review anything, let me know. Because I know it's going to be a little bit. So. And you do have the chef's card, right? He just gave you his card. Yeah. It'd be a lot quicker to go directly to him than it would to get a hold of us because then we need to go through the proper channels. And then to get yeah. a hold of the chef, it's going to take us a while. So you get a lot quicker response to go directly to the chef. Yeah, that's we'll myself. That. So if you guys need guidance or additional training or you're trying to find the service number or whatever, just call. Alright. All good. Any other questions? Very good. Okay, cool. Then uh, Champion, uh, this is a byline conveyor system. It all kind of works together. Never mind, I got Champion. I got it. What was it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are coming in sometimes. 